Hey, I want to welcome everybody in Claremont. Uh, I'm in White River Junction. Can we give it up for all our online folks and friends? Yeah, Claremont, join us. Yeah. I know we have a, a lot of friends, family all around the world hanging out with us online, uh, whether it's live or uh, on demand through YouTube. Thanks for hanging out with us. We're a Facebook family. Thank you for being there. Uh, we're in this series uh, called Falling Into Place, and I hope you've been with us, and uh, it's been encouraging because the truth is we live in really strange times. Uh, I don't know if, if you even tune in at all to the news or, you know, your favorite uh, streaming news uh, website, you'll find that there's a lot of weird things going on in the world. There's earthquakes. Uh, there was a big uh, uh, volcano uh, just recently in Iceland, like yesterday, which isn't uncommon, but there's a big one in Africa. And there's just a lot of things going on that leads you to question, like, what's going on in the world with, you know, all the pestilence and all the other disturbances? And we talked about that for the past couple of weeks. Matter of fact, um, a few signs of the end times, a quick review. If you haven't been with us or if you've been with us, these will be a refresher for you. There's going to be spiritual deception. We, we found this in Matthew chapter 24, where we'll be today a little bit. But Matthew is uh, documenting Jesus in a conversation he's having with his disciples. They ask him, what's it going to be like before you come back? And Jesus clearly lays out some real distinct signs of what it's gonna be like when he comes back and spiritual deception was one of them. We talked about that two weeks ago. There was uh, the escalating wars. Uh, we can't deny that there's escalating wars. Matter of fact, there's a, a very distinct war happening right now in the Middle East. Uh, and, and it's not even rumors anymore, right? It's this, it's this escalating wars. There's racial risings. This one's surprising to many that it's in the scripture, but it is racial risings. Jesus said that there will be a nation that will rise against nation. In the original language, it was ethnos will rise against intention against other ethnos, ethnicity risings and racial risings. We're seeing that and they're getting these, these, what Jesus calls birth pains are getting closer and closer together. They're, they're signs that Jesus is coming back or power positioning amongst the nations happening continually. It's every day there's some sort of, uh, there's some nation that has a, a leader that's asserting their, their ideas and their power or the disturbances, as I spoke of earlier, uh, or two weeks ago, we, we talked about the disturbances of, uh, of the earthquakes and the volcanoes and, and well, viruses. Uh, you guys know about that one. It's part of what Jesus said will happen in the last days. Of course, the Christian persecution. Um, we talked about that and, and the fact that right now as we speak, there are brothers and sisters all over the world who are being persecuted because they're Christians. Not because they have a, a different political perspective, Okay. We have a very Americanized version of persecution. Can I tell you there are people in the world who are really being persecuted? And it's, it's real, and, and it's actually getting more and more intense. Jesus said it would. And of course, there's Christian betrayal. Um, I see it a lot. Christians, people that you love, that you trust, that you walk, link arms with as Christians, and then one day they're like, I don't believe anymore, and they walk away. Jesus said there'll be a lot of that before he comes back, Christian betrayal, rampant sin. Um, like there's no denying the world we live in is, is jacked up more, more so than even when I was younger, right? I mean, and it's, it's intensifying. There's just more sin and it's being glorified. It's being, um, it's being raised up. And, and Jesus said, that's what it would be like before he comes back. There'll be gospel saturation. That's a good thing, isn't it? Like we get to see more people come to Jesus uh, Jesus said before he comes back, there's going to be movement. And even after he returns and catches us up, Christian, there's going to be a huge revival and those Christians are going to be severely persecuted point, to the point of death. But Jesus said, leading up to it, the foreshadowing, there will be a gospel saturation. And then uh, la last but not least, we talked about this last week is Israel. Israel is the sign that we are in the last days. Matter of fact, Jesus said Israel... Um, would become a uh, would be around. It would be uh, this this blossom that takes place. A surprise to many, right? All people that for two thousand years this nation did not exist, and then in 1948, boom, 
this nation blossoms. And so what we have seen uh, in our days are signs, signs that Jesus said he's coming back. But today, I want to share with you probably the weirdest of all the signs. So I want you to look at your neighbor and say, this is going to be interesting. Go ahead and tell them that. If you're watching online, I want you to just look at the person next to you, Claremont. Go ahead, do that. This is going to be interesting. It's going to be very interesting. And so if you have your Bibles, I want you to turn to Matthew chapter 24. We're going to be in Matthew 24, and we're going to be in Genesis chapter 6. So we're going to be in two parts of the Bible. So if you don't have the Riverbank app, I'd encourage you to download that. It's actually the church app. You need to download that. It's real easy. There's a link if you're watching online. If you're one of our locations, you can easily download that. And I just want to remind you that even though we have all these disturbances and signs and, and birth pains that are intensifying, Jesus said two things. He said, don't panic. And he said, be ready. He said, don't panic, don't freak out. Because I'm telling you, this stuff's gonna happen. And he said, be ready, you gotta be prepared. So Christians, what I hope through this series is that I'm helping to encourage you not to panic, and I'm helping to encourage you to be ready. Because we, as followers of Jesus, are in the know. Like we, we have this advantage of, of having the word of God, like this unbelievable prophetic truth that he gave us to be prepared. My hope is that through this series that you feel more prepared in light of the times we live in. So let's go ahead and jump into Matthew chapter 24. I'm gonna read verses uh, 36 through 39. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna jump into Genesis chapter six right after that. Sound good? You good, White River in the house? You good? Okay. So Matthew chapter 24, verses 36 through 39. Let's read it. It says, however, no one knows the day or the hour. Remember, Jesus is talking to his disciples. He said, I'm coming back. These are the signs. They're like birth pains. They're gonna get closer and closer together. And then he says, no one knows the day or the hour, but you'll know the generation. You remember that? He said, the generation will be the generation when Israel blossoms. Therefore, we are in the generation of Jesus coming back. That fires me up, just saying, right? But he says this, however, no one knows the day or the hour. Uh, real quick, if somebody tells you they know the day that Jesus is coming back, run far away from them. They don't know what they're talking about, okay? They don't know the day or the hour when these things will happen. Not even the angels in heaven or the Son himself, only the Father knows. So nobody knows the day or the hour, but we'll know the season. We'll know the generation. Watch this. Verse 37, you want to know what it's really going to be like? Again, Jesus gives us more. He says, when the Son of Man returns, he's like, when I come back, when I come back for you, uh, it will be like it was when? In Noah's day. In Noah's day. He, he says this in verse 38. In Noah's day, in those days before the flood, people were enjoying banquets and parties and weddings right up to the time Noah entered his boat. So Jesus says right here, it's gonna be like the days of Noah, you know, and people are just gonna be living, enjoying life. They're gonna be partying and going to weddings it's funny, a year ago, we were in the middle of a birth pain, okay? And I know there are people who had scheduled weddings, and I've been to a few, and they were pretty much, they weren't as big a parties and big as what we ever thought. And I remember people saying, will we ever go back to the days when we had fun in crowds? I'm telling you, according to Jesus, it's gonna be just like the days of Noah. We're gonna be partying. Like, can you, you can see how this is gonna flush out over the next few months, right? After COVID, I call it uh, AC. After COVID, people are already amping up. I just saw a basketball game the other night at Madison Square Garden in New York City, and it was like the biggest party. People were like in a rager because they've been pent up for 15 months. You know what I'm saying? And Jesus says right here, it'll be like the days of Noah. They're gonna be partying. They're gonna be going hard, right? Verse 39, people didn't realize what was going to happen. Like they're all about the party, right? And Jesus says, it's like the days of Noah. They don't really know what's going on. They didn't realize what was going to happen until the flood came and swept them all away. That is the way it will be when the Son of Man comes. Jesus two times says, it will be like the days of Noah when I come back. And then he kind of frames it and says, it's going to be like this when I come back. So with that said, let's turn to Genesis chapter 6 and find out exactly what it was like before 
uh, the flood, when the days of Noah, when it was going down. And then let, let's, let's examine it a little bit because Jesus gave it to us. It's low-lying fruit. He's like, hey, it'll be like the days of Noah. And if you're wondering what was it like, it was really strange days. Watch this, Genesis chapter six, and pick up in verse one. So this is the days of Noah. Jesus said it would be like this. Well, what was it like? When the people began to multiply, everybody say multiply. Multiply, when people began to multiply on the earth, the idea, the word multiply in the original language is the idea of exponential increase. Not like multiplication one plus one, okay, equals two, but like a million times a million. It was like a massive increase in population, okay? So the people begin to multiply on the earth and daughters were born to them. The sons of God, say sons of God, the sons of God saw the beautiful women and took any they wanted as their wives. Very interesting, the distinction there, that, the, that there were the sons of God, okay, and that there were uh, beautiful women. Now he explains this further. And then the Lord said, my spirit will not put up with humans for such a long time, for they are only mortal flesh in the future. And he's speaking after this event, this flood, they're, they're only going to live 120 years. That's what he says. Their normal lifespan will be no more than 120 years. I don't know about you, but I've never been, I've never met a person who's over 120. Have you? Nobody, because that's never happened. It's not documented. People are like, oh, I think he's like 125. No, he's not. They don't even know. It's all made up, right? God says that man won't live more than 120 years after the flood. It's right here. But he, here's where it gets really weird. Look at your neighbor and say, uh-oh. Okay, on your couch, tell him, uh-oh. Claremont, come on in your theater, uh-oh. Here it goes. In those days, what days are these? The days of Noah. And for some time after, giant Nephilites, say Nephilites, it's weird, isn't it? In those days, and for some time after, giant Nephilites lived on the earth. For whenever, here it is again, the sons of God, a distinction, had intercourse, which is sexual relations, right, with women, they gave birth to children who became the heroes and the famous warriors of ancient times. Everybody say that's weird. Because it is. The sons of God, well, I'll unpack this in just a second. It's just really weird. So what we have to identify here is, um, first of all, if you're taking notes, in the days of Noah, we just saw that there was a population explosion. Will you write that down? There was a population explosion. And, and it said that people began to multiply on earth. And, and we, kind of, we kind of ran a little into that and saw that, that how that population was exploding. But do you realize that um, you and me live in unprecedented times right now in the 21st century? We live in a population explosion unlike any time in history since the days of Noah. Let me show you a, a quick chart. Um, this chart is interesting and it shows um, how they've tracked population over, uh, over they, they've always had census. Uh, all the different, um, you know, power structures have had census and had established an idea of how many people were on earth. And if you look on the chart in 1800, this is fascinating. Where does the red line go? It goes up. As a matter of fact, if you were to, to, get, a, to get a little perspective, in 1800, there were one billion people on planet Earth. One billion. Um, if you were to forward to 1999, there are six billion people on Earth. Would you say that's a, a population explosion? I would say that's a population explosion. Uh, prior to 1800, 1800, there's an estimated under one billion people for many generations. After 1800, the population has increased. As a matter of fact, 1999, it was 6 million. You realize that we're about right, we're almost over 8, 8 billion right now. 2 billion increase in just over 20 years. That's a population explosion. Um, what do you think? Uh, do you think we're like the days of Noah when there was a population explosion that God identified that people were multiplying? Yes. Jesus said he's going to come back and when he comes back, it's going to be just like the days of Noah. 
one of the observations we make is that there's going to be a population explosion. Again, in, in uh, chapter 6, verse 2, the sons of God saw the beautiful women and took any they wanted as their wives. And then the Lord said, my spirit will not put up with them, humans, those humans for such a long time, for they are only mortal flesh. In the future, their normal lifespan will be no more than 120 years. The, part, the reason why God did that is to slow down the population that was exploding. Because what was happening prior to, to the flood, people were living hundreds of years. Did you know this? Like, isn't that crazy? People were living like, like Noah's dad lived over 800 years. Not, I wouldn't want to live that long, to be honest with you. Like, that's crazy, right? And he was having babies all the way through seven, 800. That's weird, right? But you can see how the population would explode because people were living long lives and procreating. Well, God wasn't having any of it, and so he slowed it down. But in verse four, the weird part in those days, and for some time after, giant Nephilites lived on the earth. For whenever the sons of God had intercourse with women, they gave birth to children who became the heroes and famous warriors of ancient times. So I want you to write this down, and then we're going to jump into it. That scripture is being fulfilled as we speak when Jesus says that it's going to be just like the days of Noah. In the days of Noah, what was happening, there was a mixing and an altering of human DNA. There was the sons of God, okay, who would be fallen angels, okay, Nephilim, who were basically not to inter intertwine with humans. I know this is weird. You guys weirded out? But this is how it went down. They were not to inter intermingle with humans, but they got to the point where they were, and they were having children. The Nephilim, fallen angels, were having children with human, uh, human beings. And that was really disturbing to God. He didn't like it. He was, uh, he was offended by it. He was uh, overwhelmed by it. And this is what the cause was for him to bring a flood to catch up the ones who hadn't been contaminated. And that was uh, Noah and his family. Is this weird to you guys? It's weird, but it helps enlighten a little bit. And here's, here's the thing. Um, this is weird. It's not normal. It's something maybe that is a little different than what you thought. But what, what, what was happening was that there was an altering and a commingling of human DNA um, with uh, another uh, DNA. And so these beings were the result of what they call the sons of God. And so scholars believe, and you can look at this, this is really interesting. If you were to go forward in the, in the Old Testament, you would see that there was Goliath, right? Um, many believe that Goliath may have descended from this uh, line. Um, I don't know how that worked out, but it's interesting. So we know that there was a hybrid race that existed outside of God's will and that God detested this and it caused him to bring destruction and to eliminate it and to rescue Noah and his family because they had not been altered with their DNA. So what does this mean and how does this relate to us today? I think it's a great question. Maybe you're thinking that, like, where is he going with this? Let me explain. Have you ever heard of transhumanism? Anybody ever hear of that? Um, I've talked about it before, but it's actually becoming more and more of a thing in the day and age we live in. Transhumanism uh, literally means beyond human. It means beyond human. Um, and there's, it's just gained traction more and more since 2010. As a matter of fact, the goal for transhumanism is to improve human life and bring mortality uh, to an end. They, they ultimately, the people who are the science behind transhumanism is to make people live forever. I got a little news for you. It, it ain't going to happen, right? Um, because that's God's job, not science's job. But it's really a part of the world we live in. As a matter of fact, I have a headline I've been sharing headlines through this ser uh, series. Ray Kurzweil, who, by the way, Ray Kurzweil, if you don't know who he is, he's, he's high up in Google, uh, very high up. Matter of fact, he's, he's like in the top five in Google. Um, and this headline says, humans will be hybrids by 2030. Humans will be hybrids by 2030, just like the days of Noah. Hybrids, 
It, and Jesus said, that's, you want to know what it's going to be like before I come back? It's going to be like the days of, of Noah. There's going to be weird things. And Ray Kurzweil, who um, is promoting mixing human DNA in a bizarre way so that we could become immortal. And that's his goal. He wants to be immortal. And the truth of the matter is this is the head of Google engineering, and he is the one who is is driving this, and Google is driving this train. This is part of their whole uh, motivation with technology. Um, I don't know about you, but I see it. I, I see when Jesus says it'll be just like the days of Noah, I see it. Back then, they were mixing and altering DNA with, with Nephilim and humans. And now we're doing it in a, in a, in a bizarre way. A matter of fact, it's not just through transhumanism that we're seeing this. It's, there's a lot of elements here. Uh, sex bots. I know this is weird, but it's a real thing in the world we live in. As a matter of fact, in Japan, it is a part of the human experience to have your own sex bot. That's weird. You're mingling your own DNA with a robot. It's animal and human, uh, ming, uh, human DNA mingling, uh, cloned animals. Did you know that right now, cloned animals are beginning to be shipped out to be eaten by humans? Because they're mingling DNA and they're altering DNA and they're, they're, there's genetic engineering that God never intended humans to do. Just like the days of Noah where, where humans were doing things that God never intended for them to do, Jesus said, it's going to be like that. You want to know what it's like before I come back? Jesus said, it's going to be like that. I've got a second headline for you. Um, this headline, this is from May 5th. Uh, hybrid monkey-human embryos created in lab for first time in scientific breakthrough. Real, this is from a headline on one of our well-known uh, websites uh, that has news. And, and interesting, as you research this, I just read National Geographic comments on this. and says, introducing one animal's cell into an embryo of another human and letting them grow together into a hybrid. It sounds weird, but it's an ingenious way to eventually solve a number of vexing biological problems. My friends, this is happening right now. It's weird. I, I, I wouldn't tell you to go to YouTube and, and search um, DNA mingling, because you're going to see weird things that's really happening in the world we live in right now. And Jesus said it'll be just like the days of Noah. Do you see it? Do you see it? I do. I see it. Uh, Noah's day, what was happening was they were messing with God's creation. They were, they were casting aside God as creator and say, we're going to kind of experiment and do what we want. And God wouldn't have in it. And it's just like those days. Jesus said it would be, and we're watching it. Let's pick up Genesis chapter 6. Verses 5 through 7. The Lord observed the extent of human wickedness on the earth, and he saw that everything that they thought, say thought, everything they thought and imagined, say imagined. So God saw everything that humans were thinking and what they were imagining, and it was consistently and totally what? Evil. You want to know what it was like in the days of Noah? Well, they were having incredible uh, evil thoughts and imagination. They were going places they never should have. And God saw that, and watch what it says. So the Lord was sorry he had ever made them and put them on earth. Say this with me, it broke his heart. So the next observation here that we see from the days of Noah that we are actually experiencing, and it is directly connected, is evil imagination. I want you to write that down. Evil imagination. Let me give you examples of evil imagination right now. Uh, TV and streaming. Very new in history, right? Like the first TV was released in 1948, right? It, it, was, it was a novelty. And I even remember growing up, we had like a big shelf TV. Like I had to get up and turn to the three channels that we had, right? It was like, I love Lucy. And yeah, that was still like in, uh, it was still playing because we had like a black and white. And then it was, 
you know, maybe a, another Leave it to Beaver rerun, and then there was maybe a newer show. Like, back then it would be Six Million Dollar Man. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Like, but it has changed so much. Matter of fact, right now, there are more than two TV sets in the average American house. That, and that's, I mean, that is a number, I think it's probably more than that now. But it's become a part of our, our normal. Uh, streaming, we can watch anything at any time whenever we want. I could pull my phone out and I could watch any show I really want. It's, it's streaming, it's accessible. And what that does is it's caused us to be able to, to have our thinking and our imagination go in any and every way, good, bad, and ugly. You know, the average child in the U.S. watches 12,000 murders, violent acts, rape, etc., before the age of 18. There should be a gasp in the room. Let me say that again. The average U.S. child watches 12,000 murders, violent acts, rapes, etc., before the age of 18. You don't think that's having an effect on our society, and you don't think that that is grieving God how our imagination, our evil imagination and evil thinking are drawing up shows and movies that depict these horrible acts. And yet we watch them and we put our kids in front of TVs. I was since I was a kid, right? That's the world we live in. What about video games? Now, I know we got gamers in our church that are hardcore gamers, right? And this isn't an anti-gamer thing, but let's face it, gaming is a virtual reality. It can be okay. It can be fun. There's some people that are completely okay with gaming and not getting, but did you realize that the top games are evil? Some of the top games are evil. There's some where you can be your own God and you create. And what that does to the imagination and thinking, it causes us to disconnect from our creator and think that we are the only one. What about this? A game where you're a vigilante and you kill at will, that women are objectified. And there's other video games that have strip clubs that you can go into and you can have an experience with your own video uh, game. It's crazy. The average American home has two video game systems in them so they can have one playing basketball or the other playing some other virtual reality. This is affecting us. Jesus said, it would be just like the days of Noah. It would be evil imagination. And we live in the day and age where evil imagination is, is being projected way more than you could have ever uh, experienced thousands of years ago. Another, this is probably the biggest and most disturbing one is the, the uh, pornography and how it's become such a part of our society. Um, what, what you can do on your device, your phone, is just hard to wrap your head around in regards to visualizing and seeing a pornography. Um, new research shows that viewing pornography actually changes your brain similar to how illicit drugs change your brain. You, you release different endorphins. There's different things that happen that change the way you think, change the way... You imagine your brain releases these chemicals, same as hard drugs. You become addicted. You come back for more, and you say, I'm just going to stop it. You can't. Pornography is a result of evil imagination in our society. As a matter of fact, did you know that pornography, the industry of porn, has, this blew my mind, and every time I look into it, research it, and find that it increases further and further. If you were to add Major League Baseball, National Basketball League, NHL hockey, golf, you know, PGA, stock car racing, you know, NASCAR, all the major sports, um, and others, you still wouldn't match what pornography, the amount of money that pornography makes in a year because we're addicted, because we have a society that is absolutely engaged in an evil imagination. Pornography is absolute in its projection of evil imagination. And we're living in the days that Jesus said would be just like the days of Noah, where their imagination 
and what they thought was consistently and totally evil. So, I don't know if you can see it, but I sure can. We're living in the days that are like the days of Noah. But let's pick up in Matthew again. Let's jump back into Matthew chapter 24. Because Jesus says something in there that I think is important for us. He says in verse 38 of Matthew 24, In those days before the flood, the people were enjoying the banquets and parties and weddings right up to the time that Noah entered his boat. Okay? Life was going on. Evil imagination. Um, all the things that we just spoke of. All these these identification marks that were just like the days of Noah. He says they're just going about life. People didn't realize, verse 39, what was going to happen until the flood came and swept them all away. Listen, if you're taking notes, this is crucial. Many people will miss it. Many people will miss it. Matter of fact, you may be watching right now. You may be here right now. You are in Claremont right now. And you're like, oh my gosh, I didn't realize how jacked up and how similar we are to Noah. We're just like it. And, and Jesus says, there's gonna be people who are so oblivious to what's going on, they're gonna miss it. Many are gonna miss it. You know, God had a plan in Noah's day. This didn't, it didn't catch him off guard. He wasn't freaking out. And just like that, God has a plan for you and me. And God's plans require action. For Noah, it was a boat. Noah had to build a boat. God commanded him to build a boat. For you and me, I need you to hear me, for you and me, our plan, our escape plan is Jesus. Jesus is the escape for you and me. He is the boat. One day, listen, one day he's coming back for you and me. And he said he's coming back when it's like the days of Noah. He's coming back when all these birth pains get closer and closer together. Let me ask you, are you ready? Are you ready? He's coming back. It's not dependent on you or me whether he comes back. It's dependent on you and me responding to the fact and reality that he is coming back. I know this is heavy. But I want to remind you of a couple things. Number one, don't panic. We talked about this each and every week in the series. It says in Matthew 24, 6, don't panic. Jesus said this to his disciples. He's burying them with the heaviness of this. He's like, there's going to be all kinds of disturbances. There's going to be nation that rises against nation, ethnic risings. There's going to be all these crazy things. It's going to be like the days of Noah, but don't panic. If you're watching right now, you're with us in White River, Claremont, and your heart rate is a little high and your hands are a little clammy, you're like, this is crazy. What can I just tell you? Don't panic. God's got this. It's not falling apart. It's falling into place. He said this was going to happen. And secondly, I want to remind you, we got to keep watch. We got to keep watch. And keeping watch means we're alert, we're paying attention. We're not caught in the weeds with our politics and all the issues of the day, but we are focused and we're keeping watch on the main thing. And the main thing is Jesus. That he has a plan that we can trust it. That he is the hope of the world. It says in Matthew 24, 42, so you too must keep watch. Stay alert for you don't know what day the Lord is coming. You know, we need to give attention to, we need to pay attention, we need to be vigilant to the times. Can't ignore them. We gotta know that God has a plan, that it isn't falling apart, it's falling into place, and we gotta keep watch. Meantime, in the meantime, listen, 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 listen. Riverbank Church, I need you to hear me on this. As much as we talk about all these headlines and, and it's weird and there's a lot of things that Jesus said, pay attention, this is gonna happen. This is what it's gonna be like when I come back. Can I tell you, we've gotta keep our focus on the rescue mission. We cannot deviate from this. This should drive us and be a catalyst to rescue. This should cause you and me to say, oh my gosh, I want every breath of my life to be about getting people in the rescue. Noah is building the boat. He's building the boat that God commissioned him to. And the Bible says he was telling people about it and they were mocking him and they were throwing things at him and they were disregarding him. That's where we have to be. We have to be willing to be laughed at. We have to be willing to be mocked for the rescue. 
Jesus is coming back soon. And we have work to do. But can I tell you as a church, I'm so encouraged by you. I'm so encouraged by what we've all been able to do even through the last 15 months of real weird birth pains. Do you realize that since we uh, have been going through this time of oddity and birth pains, do you realize that the rescue mission has been real for us? We've never backed down as a church. And since this pandemic and craziness, we've seen 223 people rescued. Can you believe that? Yeah. You know what that, yeah. You know what that tells me? That tells me that we're, we're keeping watch. And we're not panicking. We're staying focused and we're keeping the main thing, the main thing that since this season, we've baptized, we've seen people get plugged in. Matter of fact, we have a baptism coming up soon. And if you've never gone public with your faith, now's the time to do it. There's no better time than, than the craziness of the days of Noah that we live in, the weird, crazy days leading up to Jesus' return. And I believe that we have a great opportunity. And I just wanna encourage you to consider a couple steps. Maybe for you, as you hear these things, it, it does cause you to kind of teeter on the edge of panic, teeter on the edge of, uh, what do I do? Can I just tell you, you can't do it alone. You can't be a Lone Ranger Christian. Do you hear me? It's impossible. Claremont, you can't do it alone. I know Claremont is like a rugged, individualistic city and you have a lot of pride. You can't do it alone. Get plugged in to a group, one of our table groups. White River, get plugged in. If you're watching online, you still need people. You can't hide behind a screen. You need people and no more, uh, no better time than now in these days that we live in, the last days. So sign up for a table group. It's super easy. We need each other. You can sign up online or celebrate recovery. You know, we're just talking about some of these crazy things that are going on in the world. And, and you know, some people, and I, I would say all people, and I'm speaking to me, like tomorrow I'm having a time with my counselor, okay? I get to sit down with somebody and we get to talk and he gets to help me. Well, Celebrate Recovery is a great place for you to have some support. Maybe you're navigating through pornography, challenge of all the evil uh, imagination that's going on in the world. Maybe, maybe you're addicted to your video games. Maybe you have other issues. We all have hurts, hangups, and, and problems. You need to be a part of Celebrate Recovery, which meets each and every Sunday and Tuesday. You can go right on our website and get all the details you need. But listen to me, we all have a step to take. We all have a step to take, and I encourage you to do it. Will you pray with me, Jesus? Thank you for the opportunity we have to be a part of your great rescue. Thank you so much that you laid it out for us in the pages of scripture, what it will be like before you come back. Like we're not in the dark on this. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Now help us with this enlightenment, this understanding, this information, now let it, God, stir our hearts to engage in your great rescue. Thank you, Lord, for what you're doing. We thank you in advance for what you're going to do. I pray in Jesus' name, amen. I know a conversation like we've had for the past few weeks can be really heavy for people. And um, maybe you're in a place in your life where you're wrestling, you're like, what do I do with this? Like, how do, what do, I, how do I respond to this? Like, the world seems like it's falling apart, but you're telling me it's falling into place. Like, how do I become a part of that? Like, how do I, how do I take a step in trusting Jesus that he's got this? Well, it really starts with you being honest about yourself. The Bible's real clear. It says, we have all sinned. Like as jacked up as the world is, we're all a part of it. I mean, I've sinned, you've sinned. We've told lies, we've stolen things, we've done things we shouldn't do. And the Bible says this. The Bible says, for all have sinned and fallen short of God and his glory. God is holy. God is perfect. And you and me are not. 
And the problem with that is a lot of times we don't see our own sin. And therefore we have this brokenness with God and we don't know it. You're watching right now, maybe you know this for the first time. And I tell you, that's a real important step. We're all sinners. God is holy, God is perfect, and we're not. So the second thing that we need to consider, the Bible says this in Romans. It says, for the wages of sin is death. You see, the consequence of our sin, the, co- the consequence of our lying, our cheating, our thieving, the consequence isn't like, oh, I'm just, a, I'm just kind of like everybody else. No, 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 the consequence has eternal dire uh, consequences. The Bible says, for the wages of sin is death. That means that the people who are sinners, each and every one of us will die as a result of our sin. That's the consequence of sin, but it's bigger than that. It's bigger than that in that it's eternal because God created you and me with eternity in mind. Like you're gonna live forever. This is all temporary. As much as it seems so eternal for you now, it seems like this is all there is. Can I tell you, this is a blip on the radar. This is temporary, and God created you with eternity in mind. So without our sins removed, without our sins taken away by God, forgiven by him, we have a serious problem on hand, and that problem is eternity separated from God. Without our sins removed, without our sins forgiven, we would spend eternity in a place called hell. My friends, that's a problem. And I hope you feel the weight of this right now. problem of sin. But I'm here today to tell you that there's good news because God provided a solution to our problem and that solution is Jesus. Jesus came and lived a sinless, perfect life so that he could take your sins upon him when he died on the cross. He took our sins upon the cross, paid the price, It was necessary. He was buried in a tomb. And three days later, after Jesus died, he erupts from the tomb, conquering death and hell. Jesus Christ, listen to me, Jesus Christ is the solution to yours and my sin problem. Let me ask you this, do you know Jesus? I'm not asking if you know about him, I'm not asking if you've been to Sunday school or if you've been to church or if you're religious. Can I just tell you, religion and morality are enemies of the cross of Jesus. Do you know Jesus? If you're watching right now, you're in Claremont, White River, and you're like, I don't know this Jesus. I know about him, but I wanna know him today. What do I do? Well, I wanna give you the chance right now to respond. Wherever you are, I need you to close your eyes and bow your heads. If you're in White River, Claremont, you're sitting on your couch or you're in your car, I don't care where you are, pull off to the side of the road if you're in your car and close your eyes and bow your heads. This is such a powerful moment. If you wanna say yes to Jesus today, you want your sins forgiven and you want Jesus to forgive you, to give you everlasting hope in a place called heaven, I want to give you the opportunity to say yes. I'm going to count to three. Wherever you are, when I get to three, I want you to raise your hand where you are. One, the Bible says, believe on the Lord Jesus and you will be rescued. Believe. Scripture says that today is the day that you should believe. Right now, don't put it off. Don't press it away. Today's the day that you can believe. And if that's you, I want you, three, to raise your hand right where you are. Just raise your hand if you wanna say yes to Jesus wherever you are. If you're you're in your living room, you're in Claremont, you're in White River, just raise your hand. I'm so proud of you if you have your hand up. It's very important. Here's what I want you to do. If you have your hand up, I need you to raise it high enough so people can see it because I wanna be able to see it yet. Raise your hand. Now, here's what I want you to do. Wherever you are, if you're in Claremont, White River, I just want you to look up and and I want you to look to your left or right, and I have a friend I wanna connect you with. If you're online, I am so proud of you. Here's what I need you to do. I need you to text me, respond now, the words respond now, go ahead, text respond now to the number 94,000. Just simply text those two words right now, go ahead. 
you text that, there's gonna be a link that comes to you. I want you to click on that link and we're gonna get engaged in a conversation that will help you take this unbelievable step in your life. Will you pray with me, Jesus? Thank you so much for giving us such clarity for the times we live in. We are confident that it's not falling apart. We know that it's falling into place. And so God, help us to live in that confidence, not panic, but to keep watch and engage in your rescue. Pray this in Jesus' name, amen. Thank you so much for joining us today. I hope that you were challenged and encouraged by today's message to grow in your walk with God. If you wanna stay up to date, anytime we post a new video, I'd encourage you to subscribe to our YouTube channel so that you get a notification whenever we post something new. Here at Riverbank Church, we are on a rescue mission to reach people with the life-changing message of Jesus. And if you'd like to partner with us, you can go to riverbankchurch.com forward slash give or just click on the giving link in the description. We love you, we'll be praying for you, and we will see you next week.